Happy snow day, everybody. Um, in this video, we're going to continue what we were learning about in class in terms of water um, having a very high specific heat and how that affects weather patterns and climate patterns. Water has some other interesting properties. Uh, we've already talked about how water is found on Earth in all three states of matter, right? So solid, liquid, and gas. And you know already that if we increase or decrease how much energy or, or heat water has, it will change phase. So let's review um, some of the phase changes, okay? So we're gonna start from a solid to a liquid. So what's it called when we have a solid and we turn it to a liquid? You know this, it's called melting. And if a liquid gets heated up and turns into a gas, that is called, you got it, evaporation or vaporization. Okay, they both mean the same thing. On the reference table, we're going to look at a chart where they call it vaporization. Either way, they both have the word vapor. So we're thinking of water vapor or water in the gas form. Now, to go from a solid to a liquid to a gas, do we have to add energy to the water or take it away. Well, you know from experience that if you want to make a liquid water turn into a gas, you have to heat it. So as we go to the right on this chart, we are adding energy to the water and that is making the molecules speed up, right? The kinetic energy is increasing. The molecules are moving faster and so the temperature would go up. Now let's go the other way. Starting with a gas, if we cool it down to turn it into a liquid, you guys know this is called condensation. And if we take a liquid and we make it colder, it'll turn into solid ice. We got a couple of names for this process, right? We can call it freezing, solidification, or crystallization. In any case, when you go from a gas to a liquid to a solid, we have to take energy away from the water, right? The energy is released, the molecules slow down until they eventually move so slowly that they're sort of fixed in place, like in solid ice. Okay, so most of this you already know. But let's add some new things to it. Let's take a look at how much energy it takes for water to go through these phase changes. On the front page of your reference table, we have this chart down here that is called properties of water. And in this chart, they give us data regarding amounts of energy. Okay, so during melting, for example, the water has to gain 334 joules of energy per gram of water. When water freezes, the water is going to release the same amount of energy. Okay, so this chart has all the important information. So, let's summarize what that chart shows on this diagram. Okay, so let's say you have ice and you want to melt it to a liquid. For every gram of ice, it requires 334 joules of energy in order to melt the ice. To go from a liquid to a gas, it takes much more energy. It takes 2,260 joules per gram of water. So gases have the most energy because to turn into a gas, it required so many joules that water vapor is basically a reservoir of energy. And when we go the other way, when we cool the water vapor down, to go from a gas to a liquid, it's going to lose or release the 2,260 joules of energy. Okay, so it's the same number. Right here, we had to give the water energy to turn it into a gas. And now it's releasing the energy to turn back to a liquid. So if we go from a liquid to a solid, we have to have the water release the 334 joules per gram that it took when it turned from the solid to the liquid. Okay, so the key thing with this 
is you have to pay really close attention when you're using this chart as to whether it says gained or released. That's the thing that most people tend to make mistakes with, is that they're not paying attention to those words. We also have the names of the phase changes here. So you don't have to memorize it as long as you remember that you could look here. And of course, you have to know what these words mean. Okay, so let's look at something a little bit different. We've already studied the water cycle. And we're going to do this more as the year goes by. Let's add the whole idea of energy into this water cycle. We know that the oceans are the largest reservoir of water on Earth. And we know that water is constantly evaporating from the oceans into the atmosphere. Well, we just saw that when water evaporates, every gram of water has to absorb 2,260 joules of energy. Think about what that means. What that means is every time one gram of water evaporates, it's bringing with it 2,260 joules of energy into the atmosphere. There's a tremendous amount of water vapor in the atmosphere. Every gram of water vapor has this huge amount of energy. So the atmosphere is like a reservoir of energy. There is a tremendous amount of energy. When that water vapor turns back to a liquid during condensation, right? Condensation is when clouds form. The process of condensation requires the water vapor to lose the 2,260 joules of energy. That's where storms get their energy from, right? Today we're home because it's a snow day because of a nor'easter that's hitting us. Well, the reason the nor'easter is so powerful is because the clouds that formed this nor'easter, every gram of water vapor that condensed in the cloud has released 2,260 joules of energy into the air. And so that's where storms get their energy from. That's why storms can cause so much wind and thunder and lightning and rain and snow and sleet and hail and all of those things that we associate with weather-related disasters. That's why they're so powerful. It's because of all this energy that's going into the atmosphere when the water evaporates, and then it's released when clouds form. So the last thing we're gonna take a look at is we're gonna look at what happens if you were to take a beaker of ice and put it on a hot plate and heat it up. We're gonna look at what happens as that ice changes from a solid to a liquid to a gas. This graph shows us what would happen to the temperature as we turn this hot plate on and we keep adding heat for several minutes. We would end up graphing a temperature change that looks something like this. Okay? In the beginning part, the temperatures are all below zero degrees Celsius. Okay? Zero degrees Celsius is the melting point or the freezing point. So anything underneath that, the water is going to be frozen. So for the first few minutes, while this ice is on the hot plate, it's solid ice. And the temperature, you can see, is going up. The ice is getting warmer and warmer and warmer until we reach point B. And the ice reaches a temperature of zero degrees. Okay? So... From point A to point B, there's ice that's getting warmer. Because the temperature is going up, that tells us the molecules are moving faster. And anytime we're dealing with moving molecules, we're dealing with kinetic energy. So the first chunk of heat that's getting added to this ice is in the form of kinetic energy. Now let's take a look at what happens next. Once we reach point B, we can see that for several minutes, the temperature is not changing. Well, how could that be? 
I mean, the ice is still on the hot plate. It's getting heat, but the temperature isn't changing. What that tells us is that there's a phase change happening. And in this case, it's of course the, the phase change of melting. And what's happening is all the heat that's getting absorbed, it's not being used to heat up the ice, it's being used to change its phase. Now, the temperature is not changing during this time period. So it's not a form of kinetic energy. It's a form of potential energy. And it has a special name. When we're dealing with water that's absorbing heat without getting warmer, that type of heat is called latent heat. And again, it's just a type of potential energy. So the ice is still absorbing heat, but it's not getting any warmer. What it's doing is it's using the heat to break the bonds apart so that it can turn into a liquid. So from point B to point C, it's getting heat, the bonds are breaking, and it's melting, but it's not getting any warmer. Once we reach point C, now you see the temperature starts to go up again. Now we're above zero degrees Celsius. So now we're dealing with a liquid and the liquid is getting warmer from point C all the way to point D. Because it's getting warmer, molecules are moving faster. And so it's getting heat in the form of kinetic energy. Then we reach a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius, which is the boiling point. Once we reach here, the liquid is going to be boiling. It's going to start to evaporate. So for this stretch of the graph, what's happening is that the water is absorbing a tremendous amount of energy, and it's using that energy to turn to water vapor. Okay, so from D to E, the water is evaporating. So we have a phase change. But again, the temperature is not changing because it's not using the energy to get warmer. It's using the energy to change from a liquid to a gas. So again, we call that special energy latent heat. It's a form of potential energy. And so that will happen until all of the water reaches a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. Once it all reaches that point, then it will all become a gas and the gas will keep getting warmer from point E to F. And again, because it's getting warmer, molecules are moving faster. So it's a form of kinetic energy. Okay. So the easiest way to think about this is to think about it like a staircase. When you're going up the stairs, you're dealing in one phase. So you're a solid when you're going up over here. You're a liquid when you're going up over here. Whenever you get to a flat part, it means that it's changing phase. And so it's still getting heat, but it's not getting any warmer. Now, if we start with gas and we were to cool it down, we would do the same thing. We would just go towards the left. So the gas would be getting cooler from F to E. From E to D, it would be condensing back into a liquid, releasing all that energy that it gained. Then as a liquid, it's getting colder and colder and colder until it reaches zero degrees where it starts to freeze. So along this stretch over here, it's freezing or solidifying. It's releasing all the joules that it absorbed before. And then it will become ice and it will get colder and colder and colder until a certain point. Okay, so I want you to take the information from this and you're going to do a little practice now. Hopefully this makes sense. Again, this is more stuff that we have to memorize so we can review it in class together. But hopefully this at least gives you a pretty good understanding or a good background. Enjoy your snow day.